Today we're going to continue with the theme of double exposures, but this time we're going to expose hair with trees. So as always we need to separate the model out from the background. And I'm going to do that by selecting the select tool and I'm going to use select subject. And it does quite a decent job. Manages to pick everything up. It's the hair that is always the problem. So I'm going to go to second mask and I'm going to use the second brush down, which is called the Refine Edge brush. And I'm just simply going to run that through a hair. And you notice it takes away the background and picks up the straggling bits of hair at the same time. And I'll go to the other side and pick up the straggling bits of hair and get the background out. So, and that's quite good. So, we'll follow that by one, and we'll shift the edge in a bit just so we don't get a halo around the head about 12%. And I'll decontaminate the colors, and there it is. There, all sorted out for. Right, so the next thing we need is to put something in the background because it's very confusing. I need to see a checkered background. So I'll put a new layer underneath the model. I'll get the bucket fill tool and I'll just fill it in white. Now we're going to go get the trees. And we're not going to the trees. Must be in here, yep. Yeah. And there's the trees there. So we'll drag them down out of the way. We'll import them into the main document. We'll put them to the top of the layer stack. And we'll change the blending mode to be screen. Now we'll get the move tool. I can move this around the way I want it. And if I want it somewhere about there, it's just not catching the bottom, so I'll just make it a little bit bigger. And actually that looks quite good. Yeah, looks perfect. Huh? So we'll see okay to that. So that's happily in there, and what we'll do is we'll get rid of the bits that are overlapping on the skin. So we'll put a layer mask on the tree lever, we'll get a black brush, and we'll just remove the bits of green that are on our skin. So, right. the problem being that we've got part of the top of our head here, and that is due to the sky being blue. You can still see it because in the screen mode, anything that's white is invisible. So, to get rid of that, I'm going to go onto the tree layer. And I'm going to put a levels on. I'm going to attach the levels to the trees. And I'm just going to level the touch so it's not hump. 
and I'm going to grab the weight pointer, which is the right hand side one, and I'm going to drag that over until the blue sky disappears and becomes white and therefore transparent, like that. Right, now, don't really like these colours that much. They're a bit harsh, so I'm going to change them. I'm going to change the highlights and the shadows. So I'm going to do that with a gradient map. So I'm going to go to the select the new adjustment layer, and I'm going to get the gradient map. Now I don't want black and white, so if you click the black and white bar at the top here, it brings up the editor. Now I'll we'll select the white stop. There's the colour there. So I double click that, it'll bring up the colour picker. And what I'll do is I'll pick yellow. And I'll get the black stop, the right stop. And then I'll pick the blue. Maybe something like that. And you see, I like mix and narrative. But what we're going to do is change the, book, the planning mode anyway to soft light. And you see how that's softened everything. It's brought shadows out. So, make a bit of a difference. So now we're now going to do some adjustments on the, the model because she's a bit insipid. So I'm going to put levels on her. I'm going to attach it to the model. And we're going to pick the black up a bit. And we're going to take the midpoint. I'm going to take it over to the right to about 0.6. And you see the difference we've done? We just brought things much more into contrast. Now we're going to have to do something about that background because it's white. Uh, and so I'm going to put a new layer on the top. Uh, I kept using brown before, so I think I'm going to use pink this time. I'll pick the foreground colour. I'll go find some sort of pink colour, I think. Something like that. We'll get the background. And we'll make it. Like that. And if we get the gradient tool, which is hiding underneath my bucket fill at the minute, so if you right hand click it, pick gradient tool, make sure it's on light to dark, and on the radio, the second one on. And then I can just go to the center of the screen, drag it out to the corner. And see light pink to dark pink. And to see through that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it. So change the blending mode to multiply. Now, obviously, that's not the color I want really. Um, so I'm going to put a new adjustment layer on the hue and saturation. I'm going to attach it to the pink layer. And I'm just going to turn the saturation down. And I get the desired effect, which is something like that. Right. Now we're going to boost the contrast. So, don't we just add an adjustment there again? Get a gradient map. Make sure 
it's on black and white. If it isn't, you pull the little handle aside, select black and white. Then you change the blending mode to soft light. And you get a massive jump in contrast. Too much, in fact. So we're going to go to the opacity and we're going to pull it down until we get it with one light, which is about there. And that's the difference, you see, we just increase the contrast. Now I can't believe what I'm about to do here, but it is too colourful this. So I'm going to put a black and white layout on. Something I don't usually do, because I think black and white is rubbish. And so if I get a new adjustment layout, put a black and white. If I make some small adjustments on it, to make it a bit better. No, that's probably all right, that. And because I can't really make a black and white photo, I mean, the eye sees 15.1 million colours. Why the hell do I just want to say two? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the black and white layer. I'm going to drag it down. And it looks something like what I want it to. Which is something about there. Yep. Looks much better, doesn't it? Looks much better in colour. Right, so that's how we double expose a forest on a hairdo. Um, the original image and written tutorial can be found on the South Shields Digital Group site. It's under Model Double Exposure 2. And uh, there's a link to that in the header of my me, me channel or even in the description of this tutorial. Thanks for listening.